Hey, so we're gonna talk about the six major phyla for animal uh, invertebrates when we've been talking about classification. So our first phyla is going to be the porifera. These are the sponges. So very, very simple animals. Uh, just a couple of, you know, it's like cell layers, uh, it's very specialized cells. Uh, they cause uh, their cilia um, on some of the cells and they kind of move water uh, into uh, or pull water, they're pushing water out all the time. So that pulls water into the sponge where it traps things like plankton. So it'll trap plankton, tiny little uh, organisms that are in the ocean water and it'll break them down. There's all kinds of different species of sponges. So many of them will they'll have those openings where the water is flowing out of the sponge. So lots of different kinds. This one's Almost like a little basket. So, same with this. Pretty, pretty large sponge. Some of these sponges can get can get really large. Next group. These are the nadarians. Now, nadarians. The thing to know for nadarians is they have stinging cells. Although not all of the species will have those stinging cells, but a lot of these you are familiar with, like the sea anemones. You've seen, you know, where clownfish can live in there. They produce a a certain slime coat that prevents them from getting stung by those tiny little uh, nematocysts, those stinging cells. Uh, of course, examples of jellyfish, definitely familiar with. The corals, though, a lot of people don't think of corals uh, many times as, as being in that same family, but actually if you were to look at these microscopically, where all of these tiny little holes are here, well, there's an animal living in there. Uh, they do have little tentacles to them. They do have little stinging cells, and that's how they gather their food. So, and of course, here's a here's an actual preserved jellyfish. So, our next phylum is the uh, well. We're just going to focus on the annelids. There are a couple other different phyla for worms, but for seventh grade, we just think of the segmented worms. So, of course, the most common, the earthworm. You think of those segments, you know, like those rings around the body there. This is a type of sandworm. Again, you can see the segments. And many of these will have those little appendages. They can move and dig through sand. You know, leeches are actually an annelid. So they're also in that same phylum. So here's another type of sandworm. Our next phyla, well, this is going to be for the mollusca. Now, that's a pretty varied group. A lot of diversity, everything from, you know, your, your scallops. A lot of these are food items that we eat, clams, oysters. So, oyster shell here. But any of the shells that you find, uh, you know, on the beach, they have at one time had some type of a mollusk in them. Uh, that is a, usually a type of snail. Um, so of course you get some of the um, higher level of these where you've got the octopus and the squid. Um, very well developed eyes. Octopus are actually pretty smart. They say they've, they've been able to have them uh, figure out how to get food out of a jar and some things like that. Uh, of course you know some of the larger types of of shells you know the giant clams that you hear about in the Great Barrier Reef and of course there's a conch shell here so, uh, and then a couple of the preserved specimens. You know, this is just a, a land snail. So any of the snails and slugs that you see in your yard, they're mollusk. Here's a preserved octopus. And of course a clam. And these are, like I say, broken down uh, into other smaller groupings. You know, the clams, the scallops, oysters, they're called bivalves. And then we get to the Echina dermata. So, you know, you've heard of a dermatologist. Well, that's a skin doctor. Well, derm relates to skin. Echina relates to spiny. So the thing to know for these are their spiny skin. Well, we're very familiar with the starfish, of course. And usually rough, it doesn't always mean it has to be sharp or spiny. But uh, when we talk about sea urchins, well then, yeah, that's, that's kind of a different story. There's where you really get the, the spiny skin, spines like we think of. Uh, some, when they you know, have been preserved, the, the spines have fallen off. Uh, and again, there's lots of different species of, of the sea urchins. So, 
a sand dollar, something we don't always think about as being uh, any kind of derm. But uh, if these are actually live, uh, they are kind of a fuzzy and little uh, rough or bristly feeling. Again, lots of different species of just sand dollars. So, and then we have preserved here, a sea cucumber. So sea cucumbers are also in that group. You can see it's got little spines on it, spiny skin. And of course, there's another type of starfish, the, the brittle sea star. And that brings us to our last, our last phylum here. Well, these are the arthropods. And arthropods, um, again, very, very diverse group. Uh, we've got spiders that are broken down further into, uh, you know, with the arachnids, which include like scorpions. So, yeah, I got some little plastic ones here. But hey, I also have one preserved in a jar. This is pretty good size. So scorpions. It also includes centipedes and millipedes. Now, arthro, if you've heard of arthritis, well, that affects the joints, right? So arthro means joint, and pod, if you've heard of a tripod for a camera, means like foot. So we talk about jointed foot or jointed limbs for these um, organisms. Uh, crabs, of course, shrimp, lobsters, they're crustaceans. They're still in that overall group of arthropods. They have the jointed limbs, those jointed feet. So here's a horseshoe crab, preserved specimen. Of course, there's a really large uh, shed shell of one, so they do molt. So I've got, um, here's a crayfish, so relative of the lobsters and crabs. You know, barnacles are actually in this group, oddly enough. Yeah, they're, they're actually crustaceans. Uh, let's see what we have here. Uh, this is a, this is one of the centipede examples. All right, so centipede and millipedes. And then of course, the insects. Um, talk about diversity even. I mean, these are just all kinds of different species that uh, can fly, of course. Moths, butterflies, all of those are in that group. So, but that's something to think about, hmm. All of these other phyla, nothing can fly until you get to the insects. So what an adaptation. Really allowed them to colonize all kinds of places uh, around the earth. All right, well, hope you've learned a little bit. Of course, the last phyla that we study include our chordates and include us as vertebrates. All right.